Hello and welcome back to Elliot's podcast. We are in the the acoustic guitar room today, so I'll be playing an acoustic song for you. And the 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 song is is part of a three part <laughs> series, which was sort of unplanned. But the last week I did I did the provoking like sunset, and this week I have. So that was the the third lake on the hiking trip that I was on early August, and this um, this is a, that was aggressive nose scratching. Uh, the the this week I have I went back a lake so the night two, and this and this is harness, so it it'll be an acoustic. So uh, provoking was a ambient piece, and then we will move to an acoustic finger style piece and i think the the inspiration for this one was probably that i've been i i took on a new classical piece this week uh, by the composer tariga it's a very famous uh, song called capricha arab and it's a and it's in a drop d tuning so i think just so having my acoustic guitar uh, sorry, classical guitar in the drop D, I kind of came up with this piece. And I guess what's what's kind of fun about this is like if you go back to the prov- the Provoking Lake Sunset piece that I did last week, I actually went ahead and released that, not the version from the podcast, but I released that song to streaming services. So by the time this video comes out, I actually have a new release, which w- was a was a kind of co-developed through this podcast. So it's quite exciting to me that I get to use the the po- the podcast to to work through songs, and that's what's happening this week too. So hopefully, hopefully, I will have a version of Harness. Maybe the song is called Harness itself, nothing else with it, and that song is basically done at the moment and you're about to hear it happening happening soon but first it's it's nice to just chat a bit i mean that's why i do this podcast it's really it's really just about showing up and and saying hello that's my big thing and i definitely did not feel right today i was a bit tired and i was just a, i felt a bit behind and and jostled you know this is a saturday and I just didn't, wasn't feeling myself. And I would say, and now I feel myself. I feel, I feel Elliot right now. And the reason I wasn't feeling myself before was, as I said, it was a bit rushed, but also because there's always a tension about doing my podcast that will probably make me not well in, until it's, it's recorded. And and that's why every week I do my podcast is a form of personal growth. I mean, additionally, that it's it's I find other benefits, like for example, the fact that I'm working through these these three songs, and that they're getting kind of preparing them for the podcast, and then they're getting released. So it's actually quite amazing. But I do want to talk to you a bit about a, this book. Um, it's been talked about a lot lately. It's called 3,000, 4,000 Weeks, Time Management for Mortals by Oliver Berkman. And it's, it's a very popular book lately. And I just want to talk about it briefly because I listened to half of it over audiobook uh, through the library. And then the audiobook got removed from me because I ran out of time. And then finally, the print book came to me. And I have to be honest with you, I don't really know what this book is about and i i i've actually picked up a lot of good ideas from the book and stuff that's very probably similar to how i i think and i do and how i discuss productivity and uh, you know a lot of my version of productivity is is based on on is applied towards creative and and art and and making music and finishing music that's that's often how you hear me. I don't talk about productivity in terms of 
you know, making lots of money and, and, and this or that, even though they're all actually quite linked because we, we don't often don't do things out of, out of various uh, fear. So productivity is quite linked to fear and other blockages. But the, this book is 4,000 weeks. I tell you why I don't understand, you know, I've made it so far into the book and I will finish it. And actually there's a, there's actually an, a useful appendix at the back about 10, 10 ways of making use of limited time. And that, that right there is, is actually what the book is about. So the 4,000 weeks refers to the, the, the 4,000 weeks that the average life, human life is, is allotted and, and you can expect hope to expect 4,000 weeks of, of life. And, and therefore, how do you spend those 4,000 weeks? And he has many different angles about like the fact that we get a lot of stress because we want to spend that time the best we can, but that stress is over, over bearing and we end up, it ends up squandering, we end up squandering a lot of time. But, but I don't think that's, that's one take of it that I have, you know, as I said, I don't, I don't fully understand the book. And, and I guess there, but there's many angles of how we deal with um, time squandering. And so he's kind of suggesting just don't expect much. Um, just like go, roll with the punches rather. And it's, and it's kind of an antidote to like hustle culture. And the reason why I'm confused about the book is because in the end, he is sort of helping you be more productive. And so I don't want to keep going on about this book, but I definitely, there was stuff in it that I had even read today that that made me um that kind of helped put into perspective why I would say be overcome with with fear when I have to record my podcast and and the music that I'm about to play because that's ultimately where that fear comes from a part of it is yes I have to sit I will sit and I talk and I will deliver my sermon here but the the ultimate fear is that um will 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 what I play be good and I think one of the things that I had read in this book is, is that because we, we know that we have a finite amount of time to work with, we kind of, we kind of get pissed off when, when we aren't really delivering exactly what we want to be delivering because it's like, damn it, this is... I'm wasting, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm using up my time and I'm not doing it well. Um, and it becomes this big sort of fight that we have with ourselves. And I would say my, my pro processing of that information and how it applies to like, uh, the piece is, is that we have to accept that the piece is going to suck and that, like just start with that and end with that. And if it if it ends up being a little bit better than you than you uh, wanted or envisioned, then then great. You know, we'll wish you muzzle tough. But don't don't be pushing yourself so that everything is like perfect. And that's my old joke is the Romanian I used to see on the Olympics, the, the gymnastics, the, the girls doing gymnastics, and you always saw the coach. And whenever I think of perfectionism, I think of the Romanian gymnastics coach t- as an as a archetype in your mind, as this overbearing, kind of nasty person inside you that's, that's essentially bullying you around. And... It's, it's a very tough pill to swallow to say that I'm going to p- sit down and play music and not expect that it's going to be perfect and, and we're just going to work with it and, and work it through. And 
and it, it is sort of true because when it's all said and done, I do feel better. I mean, like my my podcast isn't is not that heavily like it's not like I'm I'm being watched by thousands of people every time something gets uploaded. It, it's a very small group. It's people who are really kind of getting it and and tuning in, and they they're getting something good out of it. And it's that's all it that's all it is. Like it it it's kind of be, begins and ends at this in this small way. And he he kind of goes into many different Oliver Berkman. He goes into many different areas in in life and where this sort of applies. And another one would be in like relationships and say a, a jobs and relationships have something in common, which is, is that we want the perfect partner or we want the perfect job because we're like worried that we're, we're, we're not spending this limited, this 4,000 weeks as the best possible way we can. And then, but realistically, none of them are perfect. And so you have to just like accept, okay, this is where the cards dropped and this is, and, and it's not like the, it's, 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 um, it's a work in progress really. And, and, and those, those situations, that's why they can't be really, they, they, the, the, some of these life situations can't really just be summed up in, in this, this book, but it's the gist of that that we we spend all this time um uh, what's the word um interrogating the the present moment and i did actually find that in a previous trip to algonquin park um you know a few many years ago where i was on the most <laughs> i think it was on like the most beautiful lake <laughs> and then i remember um I'm laughing because you'll see why is like, I was on the most beautiful lake. And then I'm, I'm like, I wonder if the lake next to this one is even more beautiful. And that's exactly what happens. And you just, you just can't capture like, like the enormity of, of how awesome it is to be on that first lake that we just were, we lose, we lose sight of, of it. And, and the ultimate, manifestation of that for people in their day-to-day life tends to be um we're over we become over uh overwhelmed by this this like conundrum that we just check out and we we spend time on our phones so it and we just like i even see it myself sometimes i i i open the phone and i just i'm not doing anything like i I'm, I check my email on a weekend when there's no, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to sell a keyboard. So like, I, I kind of want to see if anyone's nibbling on it, but like, why, what am I doing? And, and that's, and then, and then you'll wonder where the time went. So I don't want to go too much over this because, you know, it is, it is very personal, but it, the, there are a lot of books that are starting to try to tap into these themes. Another one is, I didn't do the thing today by Madeline Dorr, who that was her blog, her blog and her newsletter, I think for a while. And, and then it got compiled into this book and it's a very similar thing, like anti-productivity hustle culture again. So if you're interested in, in, you know, what Oliver Ber- Berkman's 4,000 weeks is about, then you'll also maybe be interested in Madeline's book. And it also kind of is a little like it takes you a while to like wrap your head around um the there's like mixed messages in both of those books in terms of like it's anti-productivity but ultimately helping people be a bit more product productive and making use of their time so um yeah and i i guess if you you've listened to my past podcasts you will you will know that I'm also, I have a lot of mixed messages on that, on those tangents as well, because it, it, it is, there's always a, a, a continuum of like, how do we spend our time? And, and, and I do like, I wish I could, could be a bit more, um, 
aggressive with people about telling them to like finish their music and, and that sort of thing. But then at the end of the day, we know that like it, it takes me like a lot of time to get these things done too. And that they come in waves. That's all. I've heard a lot of other people say that too, that, you know, inspiration comes in waves. Um, but there are other people who, who believe that you, you should learn how to, to work every day, uh, write, learn how to, to, let's say you're working on a book, you learn how to write every day and basically you confront the difficult, you confront the difficulty of, of the resistance every day. Um, but I think the, the, the two authors that I'm, I've mentioned, Oliver and Madeline, they probably knew that, um, that all that advice, you know, from the people who are really, like really aggressive in how they talk to you about, about getting things done. I think these two authors knew that it was, it was not realistic. Um, just before I, we play that video, I do want to quickly show people this, this mic stand, um, because I've been meaning to show people, I've been meaning to do a video on it and it's just, I don't, I could easily clip out from this. I never really get around to doing the video because it's, it's just such a, a kind of small detail, but it really has, um, uh, this is a, this is a mic stand that's meant for, for drums usually. Like it's not really mic, um, Mic stands, uh, if you're aware, they they're they're a lot of there's a lot of metal all over them. Um, there's usually a thing that kicks out on the bottom and then pulls and and I I I really don't like them. And the reason I'm bringing all this up is because I record in my this this stage setup is in my bedroom. And I'm really in a small spot right now and there's no room for like stage equipment or anything. And so I spent a lot of time actually seeking out the perfect mic stand for this area. And it turned out to, to be, you know, from a, a source that was not very far away, which is Long McQuaid. Long McQuaid in Canada owns the brand called Yorkville, which makes sort of cheap ish. I mean, it's very much factory Chinese equipment. And this happened to be a really, this, this thing was perfect. I, I mean, I'm trying to describe it for people who aren't seeing the video, but it's just a metal base and a pole sticking up. Um, the metal base is quite heavy. That's, and so that, and then it, it actually goes on a tilt, which I can't really do um, for the video, but you can tilt it a bit. So anyways, th that really helped um, take care of, of being able to put a microphone down, which you're going to see in this, this video, in front of a guitar in, in my room. But I actually posted on my blog this week, uh, Ableton, the company that makes audio equipment, they, um, sorry, <laughs> they don't make audio equipment, they make music software that every all the hipsters use including myself and they they actually posted a segment from their conference I don't know when it was the loop they have a loop conference and they posted a bit from it where actually they show that the iPhone they they kind of did a whole thing on like how useful the iPhone is as a recording tool and they, they kind of like show like a, a good microphone and a um, uh, yeah, a few different microphones. And then they show you the iPhone 7 uh, over recording a piano and, and a singer. And the, the iPhone 7 on the audio actually held up quite well. And that came up even on this podcast because there was many episodes where I actually recorded just on the iPhone as my microphone and I kind of noticed it was like, yeah, this, this thing works pretty well. And the reason why I'm, I'm benching that video is just to recommunicate a part of that, that post, which is, is that like the best equipment you have is what, what is already in your, in your arsenal. And, and so like, 
I might get, I might have gone through this phase where I was like all searching for this perfect mic stand. Um, and, it, and, and there was probably a lot of time in there where I wasn't even recording because I was just thinking about like how to get the perfect mic stand in, in my, in my bedroom set up. And I think it's a good, I would call this a creative habit to like learn how to work with what you have, um, always. I mean, I mean, and the problem is, is the brain gets kind of fixated on, on new equipment and it becomes quite distracting. But if you, if you, let's say you, you only had an iPhone and you wanted to, to do a podcast, like you, you see me talking into a microphone, you could easily just talk into an iPhone and then have a video, a video separate and you'll have a really pretty good sound that would be almost the same as what you're hearing right now. So I just wanted to um, mention that as well because it is sort of related to the, the previous topic is, is that we're always searching for perfect gear and, and I would say um, it's quite liberating when you finally just uh, sit down and, and play like I'm about to do in about a minute or two and you you just you're in that moment um you play and and I'm and I will mix in some video from from Harness Lake and and you and in that moment you're just making use of everything that you that you have and in your abilities and for people who who are always who are like me who always are kind of thinking about what gear to bring in this is very liberating because this, the work is not about hanging out in music stores or in Best Buy and buying new things. The work is, is really just sitting down and, and getting it done. So thank you for listening. (laughs) Thank you for helping me get out of my, my funk. That was the earlier part of the day. I know that now most, my most difficult work has been done, which is recording this. And so, um, yeah, we're about to play the piece called Harness, which is a solo finger style guitar. Uh, my name is Elliot Feinberg and my website is elliotfeinberg.com. It's F I E N B E R G. And you can check out that. I, I, I've actually been writing more on there now that I switched to, to a new blog format. Um, so thank you and enjoy. All right. We'll see you soon.
Thank you.